Recovery TV. Recovery TV. Stay connected. Distance is not a barrier. Amazing testimony. All solution in Christ Jesus. Jesus can save you today. Receive your breakthrough. Distance is not a barrier. Anointing changes things. Moments of recovery. Celebrate Jesus with Recovery TV. You are welcome to your moment of recovery on Recovery TV. Recovery TV. Recovery TV. Hello, viewer. Welcome to Recovery TV Studio in Kingdom Recovery Church of the Church Worldwide. Kingdom Recovery Church is a house of shelter, is a house of rest for pilgrims, is a place where Jesus Christ answers all prayers. And Recovery TV is a live transmitting service, touching lives, touching families, touching the world, bringing joy to the brokenhearted, hope for the hopeless, under the auspices of Apostle Edmund. Get connected. This time is not a barrier. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Congratulations and jubilation. Congratulations, you are lifted today. Congratulations and jubilation. Congratulations. Your life is changing for the best. We're going to the world, a new life, a new stage, a new start. You are welcome to your moment of recovery on Recovery TV. Recovery TV. Recovery TV. The kingdom power. The Holy Ghost power. The power. My name is Sister Confidence Daniel right. from Itire Quarter. I came today to thank God I did not come to dedicate child. I have already dedicated this baby since 2015. I dedicated this baby before I conceived this baby. And I named this baby before I conceived this baby. So today is not a day of dedication. It's a day of thanksgiving. The kingdom power, the Holy Ghost power, the Holy Ghost power. The kingdom power. I have something here. As I told you, I dedicated this child in 2015. And when I dedicated this child, they gave me receipts for them. So you can see in this receipt, you see their name. Where is the boy? The kingdom power. The Holy Ghost power. The Holy Ghost power. The kingdom power. This receipt is carrying these two children name. This one is Bonagis. And this one is Bethel. And this is their name here. On 19th of July, 2015. During Abo. Bethel and Bonagis, you see it there. During our parish dedication, our parish dedication. That was in Delta State. Yeah. Yes, in Delta State. So that 2015, that was when I had the last miscarriage. I was challenged by, with loss of children. So I had that last miscarriage 2015. I went straight to Suralaba Market, to the plaza where they are selling children thing. I began to pick male children clothes. I was picking male children cloth that day. I was picking trousers. I was picking shoes. I was picking covers. Everything I was picking that day was too too. I was picking these things. When I picked it, 
my heart, inside my heart, I was, it was saying Bethel, Bonages, inside the market there. Bethel, and I never hear anybody answer Bonages before. Bethel, Bonages. I carried those items, went home. I picked my Bible. I said, let me confirm these names in the Bible. I, I, I searched the Bible. I saw the Bethel, I saw the meaning. I saw Bonages, I saw the meaning. I just dropped those items that I bought. I said, go, this is the hour of dedication and Nemi ceremony. I began to sing and dance for Nemi. I sang Finish. I said, God, in the beginning you made them male and female because you know the importance of a male child and a female child. I said, now they say that they want to frustrate my marriage by taking male children away from me. I want you to prove to this wicked one that you are able, God. Give me two male children that will answer this name, Bethel and Bonagis today. Give me two male children. I prayed that day. I carried those items and keep it inside my boss. I did not know that when I was praying, my husband was peeping at me from Palo. He did not come and join me in the prayer. He was just peeping, hearing me. In the evening time, he said I should dress the baby girl. Let's come to fellowship. As we came to fellowship that day, after the fellowship, they announced that they want to dedicate Abo, Abo Parish. So they said adults should donate 1,005. Children should donate 5,500 each child. We paid. We paid for the baby girl. They gave us receipt. I was sitting at that usher seat. My husband left us. Small time, he came back with this receipt. I said, why did you go and pay for the baby girl? Have you forgotten that you have paid for the girl? My husband said, no. He said, this one is for Bethel and Bonages. Hi. I said, why do you go and pay for children you have not seen? The kingdom power. The kingdom power. I said, why do you go and pay for children that you have not seen? He said, this thing is the evidence of the thing that he's hoping for. That I should keep this receipt. That he's bringing this receipt again back to this church for thanksgiving. Amen. Somebody shout thank you, Jesus. The kingdom power. The Holy Ghost power. Bringing it here for Thanksgiving. I said, How do you know the name? Because when I was giving this children that name, he was not there. He said he heard me when I was asking God to give him, give me two male children that will answer the name. That he has used that donation to seal that prayer. And that the children must surely come to join us in this fellowship. So I collected this receipt and kept it. 2016, I conceived. The wicked one came again to collect the child. Unluckily to them, the man of God was around that time. Amazing testimony of the fruit of the womb. All solution in Christ Jesus. No demon Jesus cannot cast out. During the rising to the top revival, day one, the word of prophecy came through the Apostle Edmund and the anointing fetched her out of the congregation. She is testifying how the Lord Jesus Christ delivered her from the demon of miscarriage. Call upon the Lord, he will answer you. Distance is not a barrier. Jesus Christ is Lord. Get connected through www.recoverychurch.tv Let the Almighty God expose your problem 100%. The things you don't know are the things you know. God who knows it all, expose them, scatter them, destroy them, and deliver you. Prayer, prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, maybe we're about to enjoy something. I don't know where that one is going to happen. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh my God, look at that. Uh, look at that. <clears throat> prayer, prayer! Let go.
Or put your hands. <laughs> put that hand on her belly. Put it on her belly. And that's it. So as I came there that day, the Lord touched me. And that day I came with bleeding of this baby because I was three months pregnant then. And when the apostles started preaching and mentioning some cases to pray about them, the Spirit of the Lord touched me that day. So as the Lord touched me that day, the anointing just came. It came from the altar and carry me. I was trying to resist it because I have gone to the hospital and they told me that I should avoid anything pressure or whatsoever that will make me to pass through struggling that will make the bleeding to be much. So when the anointing came, I was trying to resist it. I held my hand on the chair, but the thing just moved my hand from the chair. Then I saw myself on the ground. I got up again to rush to my chair. The thing dragged me back again and hit me on the ground. So after that, I thought that everything was over. But when we came back here, I rushed to the bedroom and checked myself. I did not see any blood again. So the next morning again, I checked myself. I did not see any, any blood. That was how this baby stayed in that room. What destroyed others could not destroy the baby again because the Lord has taken place. So we are growing. The baby was growing in the womb. Before you know it, from seven months again, the problem started. I went to the scan again. They said that the baby was sitting. So uh, many advice was given to me for help, but I strongly believe in the Lord who have preserved the baby because I know that I have lost many of them. So when those advice was given to me, go this place, go to the hospital, go to the harbor, go to this place, I said no. So when the problem was too much about how the baby was sitting, even the, they have concluded that any baby that is sitting cannot be delivered again because you can't deliver baby through the bomb bomb. So they are saying that I should go and pray to my God or if this baby will turn because the baby is already big. It was even more than eight months. The baby was still sitting. Eight months and two weeks. The baby was still sitting. So they have concluded that if in two weeks time that the baby did not turn, that it will be delivered through operation because the baby is already big too much to turn. And when I said, I look at the cloud, how the cloud was standing without a pillar, and I considered the upstairs that people build, one decking, two decking. They cannot stand a decking of upstairs without a pillar. But the cloud of the whole universe, God is holding it by his power without a pillar. I said, if the hand of God can do this miracle by holding the cloud of the whole universe without a pillar, and it is standing without shaking. I said, this same hand that is holding this cloud can turn my baby for me. Pastor. Sir. Uh, this woman has received a bad news. Are you confirming? She has received what the a bad news said? over her pregnancy. She's saying yes, sir. Uh -huh. She has received a bad news. Now, good news. Good news. Sir, she has a, a, a test, a result of a test from the hospital. She's confirming that. And uh, confirming what? Uh, can you come forward? Let the husband come forward and, and, and speak on her behalf, sir. What is the test saying? Praise the Lord. Sir, as you can boldly see, the scan shows that the baby is sitting down by eight months, which is abnormal. Sir, they have confirmed that the result of the test is showing that the baby is sitting. Point of contact. Come on now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now, hey, Kolabashanda Kuria. Now, listen. Listen. Woman, listen to your belly. Listen to your belly. The, the baby is turning. The baby is turning. The baby is turning, he's turning. The baby is turning, he's turning, he's turning, he's turning. He's turning, he's turning, he's turning. He's turning, he's turning. He's turning, he's turning. Okay. Oh, okay. He's turning, baby is turning, he's turning. Lay your two hands by your two. 
two sides of your belly two sides of your belly you can remove that remove that very result now remove the result lay the two hands on your two sides of the belly left and right lungs of your belly two sides of the belly put your hands there <laughs> receive your miracle receive your miracle receive your miracle receive oh. Oh. receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it now anointing of god comes on you anointing comes on you anointing comes on you receive it receive the holy fire receive it receive it oh. before you now supposed to say there was a woman here they gave you a report in the hospital and you came with the report you are here he said cameraman can you just show me the congregation and we were about eight pregnant women they are heavily pregnant so when he was talking that in every pregnant woman they were looking at themselves he said the person that they gave this report can you confirm the prophecy and the, the camera people they were just showing him he said turn the camera and show me he said the lady that was on red dress so when he said the lady that was on red dress my head was big before they brought me out to the altar he said what was the the result all about i now brought the result out from my pores you can see it on the camera when they when, when when i was brought out they i brought it out even the tears because i was surprised how god remembered me how god revealed it even when the man was not there in the congregation with us he was in the london and was about to picture me describe me with the kind of dressing that i was that was when i believed in my heart that god has finished everything and i was brought out that day he prayed for me he also commanded the congregation to pray and they prayed he said after that prayer i should go back to where i do that scan and repeat the scan again and bring the results so i went to the scan after the prayer and they told me the doctor told me that sister i should go and praise the lord that the baby have turned praise the lord wow, wow this is awesome uh, imagine the lord picked you out from the congregation and fetched you out he knows your problem uh, viewer that is how the lord knows your problem too right there where you are viewing from uh, this task is not a barrier you can see right there in london uh, the lord touched someone in nigeria from london to nigeria so this task is not a barrier it was the skype program then the apostle was on skype so he can touch you right away wherever you are viewing from did you notice when the baby moved the apostle asked the camera people to focus on you yes. and the, that lady on red dress he said bring her out after bringing you out uh, what next did you notice did you observe anything about it because now this is the baby we are seeing here and the baby was seated you brought this car you actually brought this scan. did you notice as the mother when this baby moved when the baby returned again changed position to the right position praise the lord, the lord i noticed when the baby turned because actually when i was standing before the congregation as the man of god brought me out he first asked the congregation to pray they prayed now he summarized the prayer as he was summarizing the prayer he said i should lay my hand on my belly i lay my hand on my belly this way at the center of my belly he said no that i should lay the hand at this side so when i touch this side now i notice something strong something is a strong swear here that was when i believe that god is at work as i was standing there because he said i should lay my hand on my belly i lay my hand like this but god almighty knows where the baby was that where i was laying my hand is not where the baby was so the apostle was talking like someone who is seeing the baby in the womb he said not that place that i laid the hand this side so when i lay my hand this side that strong swell just was touching my hand he was now commanding the baby to turn he said the baby should turn and even if you focus on the camera that day people who was watching at the camera said they saw the movement of the baby even the baby was moving at my hand because when i touched this place i was not feeling anything but when i touched here i saw that this was exactly where the baby was and it moved out from that place 
but I don't really know where the baby was. But I all I noticed that was something moved out from this side. Wow. So he now said that I should go back to the scan after the prayer, and I went to the scan, and the doctor congratulated me that the baby have turned. Praise the Lord. It's a moment of This is Recovery Television. Your most welcome viewers. God richly bless you. I, I don't know where you are viewing from. Uh, this is from the Recovery TV studio. Uh, we are projecting uh, the word of life. And I believe that um, because God who in whom is life has made you definitely um, he, he has something, an option for you, and that is life. Because God is life. In him was life. And the life became the light of men. So I strongly believe that the Lord will strengthen you and give you the grace to listen to the gospel of the kingdom which Jesus Christ came to preach in this world and had left us a legacy that we must never deviate from. So that's why I want to give you uh, a message titled, Occupy Till I Come. Uh, it, I don't know whatever country, whatever nation you have been from. Uh, I want to talk to all the Kingdom Recovery Church uh, disciples in London, in Germany, in Finland, in Italy, in the United States of America, uh, and in many other parts of the world. So in as much as you are a disciple of God, of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the Kingdom Recovery Church, listen to this message. Now, if you are not a disciple of Christ, in the kingdom of the kingdom recovery church listen as well the basis why you must listen is because there is only one calling of the lord and if you miss it now that you are alive you have no other chance so many may miss it and this is because of denominationalism denominationalism is another word for division division of purpose denominationalism had created a the diverse attitudes and diverse you know kingdoms and the diverse empires because denomination, denomination belong to people. But the church Jesus brought, which he says, upon this rock I will build my church, is the church of the living God from heaven above. So as a result of this, I crave your indulgence to listen for the interest of your everlasting blessings. Because you have a promise from God to settle your life ultimately in the bliss of his kingdom. So let's listen to what Jesus says. He gave a parable from Luke chapter 19. May God bless you as you read with me. But if you don't have the Bible, listen. So may the Father in heaven give you the grace to understand this message in Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen. Uh, according to the book of uh, St. Luke chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 12. 
Jesus made a parable and said, Therefore, a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And uh, he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first saying, Lord, your pound had gained 10 pounds. Well, in response to that, in verse 17, he said unto, the, unto him, Well, thou good servant, because you have been faithful in a very little, have thou, I'm reading from King James Version, authority over 10 cities. In verse 18, and the second came saying, Lord, thy pound had gained five pounds. In verse 19, he said unto, also unto him, likewise to, uh, to that servant, be thou also over five cities. Now, in verse 20, and another came saying, Lord, Behold, here is your pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. Verse 21. For I fear thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. In verse 22. And he said unto him, out of thy own mouth will I judge you. Thou wicked servant, thou knowest that I am an austere man, taking up what that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore then, givest not thou, why did you not give my money to the bank? that at my coming I might receive it with interest or with usury. Now listen to this. Jesus Christ gave this parable concerning himself and the human beings on earth. I don't want to discount you because of the religion you belong to. I don't want to discount you because you belong to a, to a sect which has nothing to do with Christ. No. I am looking at you as a human being and I have the compassion of God towards you. And I know that you need salvation from the Almighty God. There is only one God. This one God has one purpose. Some do not believe that Jesus is the Son of God. It's only when you read the Bible you see that evil spirits that Christ will cast out, confess him, saying, what have we to do with you, Jesus, you son of God? Many places and many times. Today, many don't believe that Jesus is the son of God. So I'm not trying to discard you from this ministration. You are part of it, in as much as you are created by God. Can I tell you plainly, Jesus is the son of God. I have proved it. You can prove it outside the calling. When you answer the call of the Lord, then you can prove whether Jesus is the Son of God or not. The Bible calls Jesus the only begotten Son of God. We are sons of God too. But the direct Son of God through whom we became the Son of God is Jesus Christ. He has gone to bring the kingdom of eternal bliss. What account will you give on the last day? He gave this parable, having given money to his disciples to trade. 
Now, what are you doing with your life? Your life is a talent. Your mind is a talent. You are a talent. The sense, the brain in you is a talent. How are you investing it? It doesn't really mean money here. He use this money he gave to the servants as an example of why you were created. Have you any time asked God, why did you create me? Why am I created? Am I created to live as a wicked person? Am I created to fight? Am I created to kill? Am I created to sin? Am I created to be living a false life? Like lying life? Like wicked life? Like internal grudges? Bitterness in the heart? And smiling on your face. Is that why you created me? Have you asked God that? Have you asked God, had he created you to be dancing in the pop rooms, disco? Is that why God created you? Had God created you to be a boxer? To blow, injure people, wound people? Has God created you for that? Has God created you for abortion? There are many ways of killing. Either through suicide bombing you kill, through stabbing, through gun, through abortion, you kill. Is that why God created you? Let me tell you something. You can be doing something else if you do not know the purpose why you're a human being. Jesus says, occupy till I come. So there is one church Jesus brought from heaven. That church is universal. You have to reach the whole earth. After the gospel has reached to the end of the earth, then Christ will come. These are the last days, and we're seeing the signs of the last days. It's happening. Rumors of wars, natural disasters like earthquake, and like terrible hurricanes winds with 150 miles speed, destroying cities and destroying lives. Look at what happened in the Caribbeans. Look at what happened in, in America. Look at what happens all over the place because of hurricane with different titles. Hurricane Michael, Hurricane something, math and so, Matthew and all that. So it is very important that you know why you are called. Occupy till I come means you must be useful. You must be useful to the Lord. You are kept here for a purpose because you are going to give account of your life. Occupy till I come. Christ is coming again. The book of Matthew, I mean, the Act of Apostles, chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, tells us Christ is coming again. In what condition will he meet you? you okay, I, this, I, this, uh, this is where I worship. I, this, I belong to that denomination. I belong to that denomination. No denomination will save you. Christ is the Savior. Have you submitted yourself to Christ? Well, if you have not done so, let us pray. Let me pray with you. Now, you can open your hands while I pray. Precious God Almighty, before whom I stand, I do pray for the listener through YouTube, through Facebook, even through WhatsApp, through many electronic medias. I pray for you. In as much as you've listened to this gospel, I pray for you that the grace of Almighty God that brings salvation, which has appeared to all men, should appear to you and touch your spirit and pierce your mind with the grace of his mercy. Pierce through you and bring healing to you. Healing in your spirit, soul, and body. Receive Jesus Christ. Now say, Lord Jesus, I submit myself to you. Can you say that with me? Lord Jesus, come into my spirit. Dwell in me.
be my Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of the living God, the only begotten Son of God. I love you. You loved me first and gave your life for me to die, shed your blood, to redeem me back to God from the works of Satan. Lord Jesus, receive me. Receive me. And give me the power to propagate your name for the salvation of others. Help me to love others as you have loved me. Help me to forgive others as you have forgiven me. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. And amen. Now, God bless you. If you have heard this gospel, I mean, you are free to make contacts and call us on all available uh, contacts in the system. Kingdom Recovery Church in Lagos, in London, in uh, Germany. Just type in to your website recoverychurch.tv and order, that may lead you to other websites. Edmond Powerhouse will guide you to other websites and you will listen and be blessed and God bless you. Now, I want to be presenting to you a certain testimonies, certain blessings that God wants to make you part of it. And he has blessed people like you and you are the next in line to be blessed. When you listen to these testimonies, this will trigger faith from your spirit and open you up to receive. And God bless you as you watch. You're welcome once again, viewers, and God bless you. You see, as I told you, there are certain things that God does that many have no idea. That's why many are wasting their money to treat themselves. Can I tell you, I don't, we, I, we don't discard the works of the medical doctors. We love them, God loves them. They are there to help the weak ones. Without doctors helping some people, they'll be dying untimely. So they are, they are doing a good job. But there is a doctor that set up the doctors. Doctor of doctors. And that is Jesus Christ. That raised up the cripple at the beautiful gate in Jerusalem. Because Peter pronounced that name. Arise and walk. A man over 40 years rose up and walked. Now, as you watch at the screen here, you will also see a woman who was pregnant. And this pregnancy turned to become a breech pregnancy, breech baby. And there was no way the woman could deliver normally without operation. And this baby is already eight months old in the, uh, in the belly. And again, this baby was sitting down in the womb. Sitting down in the womb. This woman was advised by well-wishers to go to... Uh, which doctors who massage belly and try to manually force baby in the womb to turn, which many have done and wasted their lives. And she said, no, I am going to believe Christ because I knew how this baby came. This will become by miracle and is going to end up being born miraculously. 
And then she reported the case, weeping and lamenting in the church. And when there was an online program, the Holy Ghost program online, through Skype, the Holy Ghost noticed her, brandished her out before the congregation. And she got to the front and being prayed for by the Spirit of Glory. Wow. The woman was sent back to the hospital to the same pathologist that scanned her into that condition. And guess what? Seven days later, the woman returned with the scan she made the following day after that prayer. And the scan read that the baby is now set. But my question is, I wonder how those people feel when they saw that the scan said yesterday and this is the condition and put the woman under pandemonium, weeping and lamenting. And the following day, there's a smile. I wonder what might have gone through their minds, what might have taken place. So watch this and see and praise the name of the Lord. And God bless you as you do so. Yeah, sister, God bless you. Tell us your name and what Jesus has done for you. Praise the Lord. My name is Sister Confidence. I was here Monday last week. I did not want to give this testimony yesterday when they were calling out for testimonies because when the Lord brought me out here on Monday, I came out with evidence and I want if I want to tell the church that the Lord have done it I also want to come out with evidence to prove it I was in a dream a gift was brought before me and they told me that this gift is specially made for me they wrapped the gift like a wedding gift in a foil and they said I should take I say, what is in it? They say, must I know what is inside this gift before I collect it? I say, yes. I want you to lose it. If I see what is inside it, if I don't like it, I will not collect it. But if I like it, I will collect it. They refuse to open that gift. And I refuse to collect it. So after long argument, they lose the gift. When they lose that gift, it was operation tools that was inside. The scissors they are using to cut Tommy, Every equipment for operation was in it. They wrapped it and brought it to me. I said, this is operation tools. I will not collect it. And they said, what makes you so confident enough to believe that you will not deliver with operation? I said, this is not my first time to deliver a baby. I have delivered the first one. It was not with operation. And I believe that my pelvic is okay to deliver the second one again without operation. And they laughed at me. They said, don't you know that children have different legs? And they carried that gift and went away. I woke up. I said, what kind of dream is this? I woke my husband. I said, look at the dream I had. He said, let us pray and cancel it. So we declared three days prayers and canceled that dream. After two months, that dream came back again. That same oppression dream came back again. I told my husband, say, this dream has repeated again. I went to scan. They confirmed that the baby's position is not good. That the baby is sitting down. So, my husband, as he was looking at the scan that day, he said, could this be the reason why the man of God said on that day of your testimony that I should lay my hand on your belly? Everybody was here that day. He anointed my husband, Pam, and said he should lay it on my belly and let the congregation rise up and pray and counsel anything that will make a case to come up. A result to come up that the baby's position is not good that the baby is staying bridge that will result problem that the congregation should cancel it and the congregation prayed and cancel it that day that monday that i came here was on the fourth day of that prayer because it was seven days prayer so we were very serious and praying even my sisters were so troubled when they heard about the position of the baby they advised me to go to Ijo, let them use the means of massage and turn the baby 
But I, I told my sisters that I know how this baby came. That I will never go and seek for woman's help to finish what the Lord has started. That the Lord started this uh, with this baby miraculously and he's going to end it with miracle. So my sister said I should go. That a lot of people have gone there. They massaged them and turned the baby. I said if the finger of man can massage somebody and turn baby, that the finger of God is more powerful than the finger of man. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I want God to finish what he has started because he is the beginning and he's going to be the end. So that was how I came here that Monday. I came here that Monday. I was not the only pregnant woman in the congregation. Everybody was my witness. Because of the people that are saying that it's not the case. I was not the only pregnant. A lot of women came here with big tummy. But God specifically called me out. He said, a lady with red top. A lady with red top, come outside. Look, and that, that's, a, that's a pregnant woman wearing red, 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 red. Pastor, bring that lady out. Yes, sir. Pastor, bring the lady out to the, to the front. Quickly, quickly. Bring that lady out to the front. And the man of God prayed and God settled that case here that day. Praise the Lord. So, I came here today with the result. This is the previous one. I done another test again after the prayer of the man of God. Yes, I have done another test after the prayer of the man of God. This is the present, the previous one. Okay, this is the previous one before the prayer. Yes. And now this is the present. The viewers, this is the previous uh, test she did before the prayer of the man of God on Monday anointing service. Okay, let, let me also show them the, the current one. So this is the one you have just done after the prayer of the man of God. No, it's like this. Look at the baby. This, look at, this is the picture. So the previous one, the baby was sitting, then the present one now. After that Monday prayer, now the baby have done. <laughs> He just rebooked that miscarriage. The pregnancy stood. I gave birth to this one. It was a male child. On December 5th, 2016, I called him Bonagis. I was waiting again. Before you know, I conceived again. I gave birth to this one. August 10, 2019. I called him Bethel. The kingdom power. The Holy Ghost power. A better clap offering unto the Lord Jesus Christ, who has added to the church. May his name be exalted forevermore. In the name of Jesus. Amen. A thanksgiving indeed. Mr. and Mrs. Daniels, God bless you. Recovery TV. Recovery TV. Recovery TV.